Okay, so in this tutorial, I want to show you how to how you can create a view shed using structures that are a point file. So in this in this point file, we've got uh, some structures, and there's two structures for for our viewpoints, and then each of them will have a, an elevation field for the height of the the platform or structure above the ground, and then also we are going to well we're going to create a viewpoints layer from that, and then create a view shed and we'll be using the visibility analysis plugin to to run through this query and yeah so um uh, yeah join me for that and i'll show you how you can create a view shed for your model cheers okay so so this is that tutorial so so what i want you to to get first of all is you're going to need an an elevation surface um, in this instance, I've got the I've, I've I've taken the contours and I've converted them into a, a raster digital elevation model, and you will also need that to be in meters, so so not decimal degrees. So make sure that it is in a projected coordinate reference system that's in meters, like uh, this one here, how to best hook number 27, and then also you're going to need some structures. So we're going to be creating a view shed using these structures. And with these two structures, we are going to try and determine which portions of our property, from which portions of our property we can see these structures and from which portions we can't see these structures. So that's what we're going to be, that's the ultimate goal of this tutorial. So what we need to do is first of all, activate a plugin which is called the visibility analysis. So, so if you have if you haven't got uh, it loaded, just open up your plugins manager and just type in visibility, and then this little plugin option will pop up here. So we want to turn that on, and then we can close that, and that'll give you a few new tools in the toolbox. So let's uh, activate the toolbox, and the first thing we need to do is create the viewpoints. And we're going to use this structures point file to create these viewpoints. And if we just open up that attribute table for those structures, I'll show you what's inside there. We've got uh, a name as well as a height column. And then there's also the ID column. So, so these are the uh, columns that we're going to use in the next step. So expand the visibility analysis options. And then we're going to create new viewpoints. So double click to open the viewpoints. And then we're going to choose the observer locations as structures. The digital elevation model, or the surface we're going to be working off, is the digital elevation model. So that's the DEM. We can set the uh, observer IDs to the, the, the viewpoint name. So we can choose that column. And then the radius, now this is basically how far from the viewpoints it will calculate the, uh, view, the viewpoints and the view shed. So we can maybe make this uh, 6,000 meters. Then we're going to set the, the field value for the, the analysis. Uh, no, we're not going to set this option. Sorry, we, we, we've set it there. So we're not going to choose a field. There's no field which will give us that option. Then the observer height. So now this is, if, if you want to set the observer height standing on a platform, and the platform is at 30 meters, let's say, and the observer is 1.8 meters tall, which is, what is that, 5 foot 11, then you would choose 1.8. So in this instance, let's just assume the observer is 1.8 meters tall. And then the actual height of the platform that the observer is viewing from will be the height field. And that can be anything. I, I've got 20 and 30 as my height uh, values. That could be quite a bit less, depending on what your platform height would be. And then the target height, now this is the height of the target that, that you're looking to view. So if it's also if you're looking to view the ground, specifically just the ground areas, you would leave that at zero. But if you're also looking to, to possibly see uh, another person who's also 1.8 meters, you could also put 1.8 meters in there. And we're not going to have a, a field uh, value for, for the, uh, the target. The target is going to be on the ground, not elevated above the ground. And in this example, we'll just create a temporary layer. So we can click Run. And that adds a temporary layer to our project. We'll just close that down. We'll just close this for now. And this is our, our new uh, viewpoint layer. So we can rename this to Viewpoints. 
and we'll possibly just change the color of that to a uh, something we'll make it cyan as well so we can see it and then also turn the labels on and we'll use the the uh, the ID which came through from viewpoint so that that was the viewpoint uh, column that came through from structures just give it a buffer uh, we don't, we're not too worried about where it is maybe make it a little bigger than that actually so it was two let's make it three and then if we just bump it off our our, our um, point slightly so we can see it okay so there we go and I'm going to close that down so now I've turned off structures and we've got the temporary uh, layer viewpoints which has been rendered here you can make as a permanent layer if you if you need to but uh, for this example I'm just going to leave it as a temporary layer right so now we need to open up the visibility analysis tools again and this is where we're going to create the view shed so now we've got the viewpoints and we can create our view shed Okay, so the observer locations are viewpoints. We're going to use the digital elevation model. And then the atmospheric refraction refers to the amount of distortion in the atmosphere, which is going to be different depending on whether you're at sea level or if you are at altitude. And there might be a, a number of other func functions which affect the atmospheric refraction. And I think you just need to, gonna, you're going to need to read up and find out what the best value is de depending on where you are. Let's create another temporary file and click run it shouldn't take too long okay there we go so what you end up with is a raster with an output file and we've got values of naught zero and one so if we just go and uh, use the unique figures or the unique values and then zero is areas that we cannot see so let's just make that uh, actually what we'll do is we'll take that value out and then we've got values of one uh, which from from value from areas that are valued one you are able to see one of the um, the, uh, the viewpoints uh, what color should we make it let's just make it uh, yeah, let's just make it red and then where you can see two of the viewpoints there is a slightly different color let's make it let's make it a darker red like that let's see if this works okay so and possibly we can make that a bit lighter it's not I'm not really happy with with the contrast between those two colors okay so from values of one we can see at least one of those viewpoints from values of two we can see both of them and then from values of zero we can't see either Okay, so let's see what this looks like, and possibly before I, I, I actually render that, let's make it slightly transparent and see if this actually works or totally messes things up. We'll say apply and OK, and there we go. So what we can see, first of all, I'm contrasting, I maybe should change some other colors here, like for instance, the, the boundary color here could possibly be slightly different. I'm not happy that it's it's the same orange something uh, bluish like that that kind of works for me and then possibly put it above that uh, that new layer so this is the view shed so we can actually rename that and if you want to you can uh, save it as a permanent layer and that's it so it's the view shed from those viewpoints and like I said points of two we can see both of those viewpoints points that are orange or lighter or points that are one you can see at least one of them and where there are no areas that's where there's a, a, a view shadow and you cannot see either of these two viewpoints so if you're looking to cover uh, more of your site you may need to put another viewpoint down here or down there etc and then also it's going to depend on how far you're looking to see if we look at the distance between these viewpoints how far can you see uh, five kilometers what can you see from five kilometers so if the if that's going to be an issue with regards to to spotting features then the distance between the viewpoints may also be something to consider okay and that's how you create a view shed from your viewpoints using the visibility analysis plugin okay so that's uh, basically where I wanted to get to with this model give me a shout if you have any have any questions cheers